Right, hello again folks, here we are, back at the uh, drawing board to finish off um, this this drawing of the barn door in Mooka. Sure, I've got the reference picture somewhere, but we don't need it. Um, you might look at this and think, well, that's finished, it's perfectly serviceable as a line and wash drawing. I'm quite pleased with the quality of the line work, but to my eye, um, what I need to do now is to just use a pen, and I'm going to use a, a slightly heavier pen. I'm not sure if you can see that. Look, that's a 0 0.3. And I'm going to use bolder lines to pull certain elements of the of the image away from others and give it give the whole thing a bit more depth. I'm going to start up here at the top, look, um, and we'll put some lines under this guttering just to pull it away from the wall. There you go. And then I held that pen, I don't know if you can tell, but I held the pen quite loose. I'm holding it a lot, sorry, I held the pen quite firm to get that firm, bold line. I've now lightened my grip. What I'm gonna do now, let's just move this paint out of the way, is to do, um, the first obvious trick is to put, um, these bolder lines around the outside of of the wall um, and I'm not sure if you can see what's happening I'm kind of following carefully the previous pen lines and the shapes um, let's see if I can do it on here a bit more I think that's yeah, and that's the one, and that's the edge. And we'll follow this around. And what it's immediately doing is, and I'll do along here, along the um, the lower edge of the steps, just to give them a bit more definition and pull them away from the the other the stones that are underneath. Let's do something on here and on here. Um, and also on the lower edges now, which leads me quite neatly onto the, well, let's do this, this strong line under this lintel. Um, the next little kind of trick, which is to imagine the lights coming down um, in that angle then the bottom edge of any of these stones will be have a lot more shadow look there and I like to pretend the shadows in there and it's creating dark spaces look um, and it's at this point that a lot of art purists might think well, you're verging away from um, from line and wash now. You're, you're sorry, not verging. You're kind of veering away from line and wash. And a criticism I've often heard on um, art documentaries by art critics and judges of competitions is that um, what I'm straying into now it's more straying into the realms of illustration uh, and that age-old see but I think that's that's immediately given that um, it's pulled the steps further away so let's carry this on up here and I will finish the sentence I started a few minutes ago um, about illustration is, is, is illustration a valid art form And I've heard this topic discussed time and time and time and time again, and it's almost looked down upon. Um, so let's follow along up here. So we'll, we'll do the same thing. I don't want to completely obscure these uh, lovely spidery loose lines by being a bit too heavy handed with these um, these tricks, but look, that's kind of showing a bit more and let's put some on here because they've got to remember that they're 
the stone on top would cast a bit more shadow on the ones underneath. Difficult to to see, to visualise without um, without the reference. Or, but I've done enough of these to know, to be fairly confident, that I can kind of work out roughly. Let's make that two stones now, look. Um, yeah, and, and this thing about illustration, um, it really annoys me, you know, it's near, yes, but it's almost illustrative, um, so therefore it's not fine art. Um, but you look at the likes of Peter Blake, you know, his his background is an illustrator, he doesn't call himself a painter by any means, but would you, would you sneer at Quentin Blake's output? I certainly wouldn't. But their illustrations, you know, he's just opened a flipping museum called the House of Illustration. Um, so that to, for me, that's that's endorsement enough. Um, right, and the emphasis lines up here won't be as visible. These are at eye level. These are below eye level, so there, were, there may well be a bit more down there. And the ones up here, you'd hardly see any of them. In fact, you'd, because your eye's looking up at them. So um, it's all of these kind of things you've got to bear in mind. If, if, if your goal is to make um, this drawing believable um, in that, let's, let's carry on while I'm here. Let's move down here, on the edge of the, the edge of the drain pipe down there. Um, then you need to learn all these tips and tricks, and make. A, but don't use every line because you can't make everything heavier than everything else. You've got to leave some some contrast in, some comparison in. Um, and then I might add some debris at the bottom of the wall there. Oh, I just realised I need to move this um, this further up because you can see all the sky, look. I really do need to tidy this desk up. There you go. So what I was doing there look, was adding some, some details there. Um, and another little trick, this pen... What is what is this one? Oh, it's a Pilot G Tech C4. It's a beautiful pen to write with. Um, the only big difference in here is that let me put a line down here. Look, I'll show you why, what I use this pen for. There's a line. There you go. Let's put some under there, and some under there, and one under there, and one under there. The difference between this and the pen I was using previously is that this pen, the GTEC 4, has got water soluble ink in. So let's hope this works as I'm doing this live. Um, fine brush, clean water, and there you go. Look, it's pulling out a lovely, a lovely grey tint for the ink so we can we can kind of use this to pull the ink out there and give it, give the, there you go. And it's just very subtle look, but it, it's giving it a really nice, um, a nice effect. And you can use it, look, down here, this is getting a bit bland. So let's, let's, let's draw some more lines in with the soluble pen. There. And by blackening in there, look, I'm creating a reserve, almost a reservoir. Back to the brush. I can look, you can pull out some lovely, lovely tones of, of, of ink there. And in fact, let's use it to its best effect. I just draw a line along the top of where I want to. Um, where I want to pull out some 
uh, some additional shading look. And these are on the kind of the vertical, the risers. Again, you don't need much, you don't need much water look. And it's going to pull out the tone of that ink and there's enough left to actually do it. Let's do it on here, look. More water, but you don't need your brush completely wet through. Um, there you go. Let's have a bit more under there. And I'm emphasizing the balance between light and shade on, on here by leaving the tops of the. There you go. Leaving the tops of the steps in more light. And I think there may even be a bit more there. I've got another version of this pen. Um, I think this is a pilot as well. And I think this one, this one will work equally as well. It's just a bit, it gives you a bit more ink look. And it's a bit, it's spreading a bit in the water, but it's useful enough to, there you go. And you can then actually use this to create shadows quickly without mixing a, um, a dedicated shadow colour um, and up here and then particularly where I want to get some shadow in is along this see how thick that line is but I'll uh, I'll be able to use most of that because that there you go that lintel looks a wee bit um, too pale so pull it all down there look, knock it back but the tone of the, the lintel will show through. Um, put a bit up on the roof there. A little does go a long way. And then um, the only other thing now is to just quickly pick up some, some of these Payne's grains. Some of these look a bit even there. Dampen them now, we'll put some down there. But in terms of um, in terms of just fine-tuning it, I think I'm a lot more I'm a lot happier with that. Except for this appeal up, there's still some some um, stonework that's looks a bit flat. So let's just drop this colour I've just picked up from the palette is um, some Payne's grey. Let's just pick up some of this now and drop it in. Um, because although, you know, I can go on and on and on and on, I think I, I reached that, um, that dreaded point about two minutes ago. Um, which is the point of fiddling so i think i shall um i shall definitely leave it there and um hope you've enjoyed this and i hope you agree with me that that has actually now got some a bit more a bit more shape and definition um just looking at it now all i need to do is to just sharpen up that it was looking a bit just a bit woolly and see if I can pull there you go it's just pulling some down that looks a bit better looks a bit crisper to me that the, the edge of the and then of course you can always put other added lines in if you want to be really clever look and let's do all of this just fill that in pick up some paint there's a unexplained white area so there you go i'm definitely fiddling now so there you go there's the barn door in mook i think it's about the fourth time i've drawn this so this must be barn door in mooka version four 
hope you've um, hope you've enjoyed it and as always please leave any comments uh, criticisms or anything else in the comment section or drop me an email thanks again see you on the next one